Hello everyone, Lewis Crompton here and this is not financial advice. While in Dubai for business a few weeks ago, I spent £1,000 on a biro. Let me share with you why I did that. And if you want to learn about how to do money better, how to make more of it in less time, then like this video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so it seems pretty outlandish, right? Spending £1,000 on a biro. The reality is it wasn't just a biro, it was a ballpoint pen though. So it was actually a very, very fancy biro. The item in question is actually a Mont Blanc pen. Now I have loved Mont Blanc as a brand for a super long time, but I always resisted buying anything other than the aftershave because I didn't think it was a smart decision in relation to my net worth um, or my income at that point. Net worth and income are different things by the way. You see, as you grow your money over time, there are certain items, certain objects and fancy possessions that it makes more sense to buy. And part of the reason for that is because of the nature of the quality of them, because of the nature of the brand and the demand for that brand and those particular items, which is often fueled by scarcity. Scarcity caused by the way in which it is manufactured, often by hand and with intricate detailing, those factors push the value of the product up and mean it's harder to make so there's less of them. Just like Rolexes, for example. It is actually cheaper to buy them brand new for retail price than it is to get your hands on them second hand. That is because getting hold of most models is near impossible unless you are a retailer yourself or have a long history with Rolex. Maybe I should do a video on how to use trading to buy Rolexes. Let me know if you want that in the comments. I picked up my most recent one, my most recent watch, in New York City when I was there on holiday. Uh, what is it about traveling that makes me spend ridiculous amounts of money? I don't know. I just get into this, this mood, this vibe. Uh, last I heard, the waiting list in stores for a Rolex was five years. Crazy. Anyway, back to my biro, my nice, lovely pen. I won't lie, there's an element of which I was just sold on the idea of it by the guy in the store. The idea of a particular pen that I bought, of the particular pen. If I were to spend £1,000 actually on a biro, then that would be madness. A biro is low quality, disposable, and temporary use. Clearly, that is not what I bought. I'm not that insane, clinically. What wealthy people do, though, is they invest in items which hold their value. The pen that I purchased will hold its value over time. So how does it hold its value? As I've talked about before, the item is perceived by others to be a good investment, and therefore it becomes one. Self-fulfilling prophecy. The perception of the brand is high quality, it's respected, and it's exclusive. How exclusive it truly is, I don't know, considering that Mont Blanc is in every airport on the planet, which is where I first discovered them when I was traveling the world. Side note here, when I walk into shops like Rolex or Mont Blanc, I always make sure I am dressed down. I like to go looking like I'm broke. Do you know what is really interesting? They never ever respond to me like I am. They always offer help. They show me anything I ask to see. They spend time with me. They talk to me about the meaning behind this design or that design or behind that maker or designer of a particular style. The further up the wealth ladder you go, the more you realize value is added because of the story behind something and the meaning, the effort and the passion that has been put into something that's been created. If you ever go to a fancy restaurant, and I'm talking really fancy here, not Nando's, that doesn't count as fancy, you'll often have your waiter or waitress give you a story behind the dish, where the ingredients are from, how they were prepared and what inspired the dish from the chef's many travels to this remote part of wherever. Now, you aren't going to get that from any uh, anywhere like my good friend Ronald McDonald around the world. I wonder how many videos I can actually sneak Ronald McDonald into. He was in the previous one as well, if you can catch him. So why did I choose this particular Mont Blanc pen? Because there are cheaper ones out there. There are more expensive ones as well. Some Mont Blanc pens go for sale for over £100,000. Not sure I see the value there, other than from the perspective of being a collector, a very wealthy collector, that is. Maybe I'll get there one day. The one I chose was a limited edition, again, building in that exclusivity. It was to commemorate 50 years of the UAE, which I really liked because the story of the UAE is truly fascinating to me. Highly recommend looking into it. The color of it is beautiful. It's a beautiful green and it will always remind me of the fondness of the time and the people I have met 
in the UAE which have continue to change and uh, inform my life and my decisions going forward. Now you can only buy this style of pen in the UAE. No way will you be able to buy it elsewhere, which makes it harder work to get from memory. I think they only made about a thousand of them and I have one. Um, it's in my rucksack right now, poised and ready to change someone's world and future with the words that I choose to write with that Mont Blanc pen. Around the time I was buying it, I was on a bit of a mental and an emotional journey of choosing my uh, choosing to highly value my knowledge, should I say, choosing to highly value the decisions and the thoughts that I have. Now, I am a writer. I've always wanted to write and to create and to share and to teach and to empower and to help and to inspire people. That has always been a part of me. Now, this pen, this pen that others see as just a pen, to me was a symbol of deciding to highly value the words that I create and I put out into the world. This pen is a constant anchor and reminder that the pen is mightier than the sword and can change the direction of a person's life forever. Now, I may be a hypocrite because even these words I've written down, <laughs> thinking about what to say to give myself prompts for this video, were actually typed but I do have a notepad and I do use my pen and it always adds that extra little something to the process. I like a bit of old school stuff like that. I use this pen to sign big business contracts and to make key decisions. Um, I can't be signing for massive financial stuff with just a biro now, can I? It has to, has to have a certain element of sophistication. I even signed or rather wrote my wedding invites with this pen. And I should probably go on to mention that having now bought it, I'm over it until I hit my next big income and net worth goal. Would you buy a 1,000 pound pen? Do you think it's mad that I did? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to learn about how to do money better, how to make more of it in less time, then like this video and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you share this video with someone who you think it will inspire, who you think it will challenge, or maybe you think it will piss off. My name is Lewis and this is not financial advice.